I've mapped out a section that's that long, be the front of a box. And in this case, uh, the wood is Alaskan yellow cedar. I almost always do these in oak. This particular one is in the yellow cedar. Uh, it'll be a lot easier for you to see what's happening. It'll show up better on the camera. Um, I've, I've followed the outline that I did in the drawing in the intro to this video. So here's the middle of my carving with a circle scribed on it with a compass. And over here, one end of the carving with a half circle. And then the two vertical lines that divide that section into thirds. So I'll start just on this chunk of it. And I'll begin with the um, uh, the 3 8 inch chisel. I have I've already struck a line with a marking gauge, right like that, there and there, and up here and here. Um, so those are where I first strike with the 3 8 inch chisel, like that, and like that. And this is eyeballed on that vertical line to just try to center it on that line. And then there are cuts below and above to form the U-shape of that bracket that I call. That piece I call a bracket, I don't know what it's called. <clears throat> like that. So those you really want to get pretty square. This one is a little bit tilted that way and I could re-strike it like that. Now comes another cut. Oh, one thing I didn't say is in this case the bevel of the chisel is into the waist. So that's the piece that's going to come out. And I tilt the tool so the bevel is pretty vertical, not uh, so the chisel is vertical. I don't really know that that matters. And now cuts this way. And in a softwood like this I'm just tapping it in the oak I'm giving it a pretty good hit. So those are those five cuts that I spoke of earlier. Now, using this one inch wide gouge, I'll connect from that point with the chisel cut to the margin and come around that way as well. Here I'm just going to do one side of that arch for now and here. Uh, that didn't connect. They really do have to connect. So we'll go back and re-strike that. And the sequence of cuts, it's unlikely that I'm going to um, remember what I did in the drawing and follow those steps verbatim. I usually always begin with that, those five cuts with the chisel to make that U-shape. Uh, and then go to these arches. And uh, then where you go from there can vary. I'll use this little roundish gouge to just cut that circle that is centered on the vertical and horizontal 
lines. And then outside that are sort of um, this a very narrow tool with a very slight curve that will make the um, the second circle that sort of is concentric to that first one. So now, using the chisel again, I eyeball these and then you can see the way they connect up there. And this cut is on that same marking gauge line that uh, the first cut was on. That one's a little crooked. Straighten it out like that. You see that one if this cut doesn't come over far enough, then that cut overhangs it a little. And now back on that marking gauge line, that cut. So I'll do that again over here. So there is no drawing really on the piece of wood other than the layout lines, those center lines, this center line, some compass work. All of this uh, is established just as you strike it. which can be a little nerve-wracking for starting out. So if you need to draw it, uh, then by all means do so. But eventually you'll learn to just cut it. And, uh, and sometimes you... one strike of the tool it can be fatal, but generally speaking, it works out all right. Now back to that gouge, and I'll do the inside of that arch. And what I'm wanting is the 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 bit that's going to remain to be pretty even in its width. Now I'll work on the bit in the middle here and these parts. So now I need another center line that falls in the middle of this uh, arch section. And here I use this little maybe three quarter inch wide gouge to make a little diamond shape connecting the horizontals and verticals there like so. And now I think it's back to this one. And this isn't a full circle, but it almost is. It blends into a 
horizontal line that runs like that. That helps you see it a little better. And now, let's say it's this tool, and then you switch to something a little flatter to bring those around, like so, and then maybe this three-quarter inch gouge that seem right no seems too big I'll cut that off like that and then up to the center line there in here is that uh, single leaf that doesn't it doesn't hit yet. You connect it with a reverse curve with a smaller tool. I think I talked about it, that, that in the video being such a small detail but um, one that I really like. So I need to do the same business here, just simple, it's just upside down. And when you're starting out, if you have a hard time visualizing it upside down, turn the board around. Ultimately you'll get to the point where you can do it upside down. You use a lot of tools in the strap work carvings, which can be a little frustrating. You're always picking them up, putting them down, looking for them. of this one. And here I'll use that same chisel just to strike that part on that margin. Bevel to the waist, tilting the chisel a little bit.
and now I just need to connect that business and I think I'll use something a little flatter right there like that and sometimes that that spacing is closer and those arches uh, finish off just with the first gouge and don't need that third strike. So now I'll do around this uh, half circle in this one. There is a square section coming off of those circles. And I just guessed on that spacing, and I'll use a compass to find the same spacing above the center line. So that is chisel cut here and there. That's probably too wide, too far off of the centers, but uh, it's okay. So then eyeballing 90 degrees to those cuts, and then that connects, well, connect here. Could use a wider chisel now. I told you it's a lot of tools. And right here. There, so uh, there'll be a similar thing going uh, vertically, so coming off that circle, but I'll do it a little smaller um, and can strike that with uh, with a square and an all. And it comes out to the margins. Oops, except I didn't draw that line that far. It'll get interrupted in here. I'll do that afterwards. Once I have that established, that tells me where this cut goes. Because this is the piece of an arch that turns into a little scroll and gets uh, closed a bit. So I'll do that. About like there. And I go through a couple different gouges to um, Cut this, see how I've then kind of chopped that a bit to begin to round this down. Um, and I might even go to a third gouge to finish that off.
like so. And like that. So that was one. Two, uh, where's the last one? Three gouges, which is a lot. That's probably overdone. And then yet another to connect up to the whole thing itself. Then I'll fill in the leaves that go here and finish off the uh, half circles. So this is back to the biggest gouge, the one inch gouge. And this will come out of that sort of closed scroll there. that it comes away from it see that that's going to cut out now is this going to fit here yes that's a pretty big leaf I don't like them that big usually this one wants to come down a little more. So now just some uh, chisel work in here. And that reminds me of what uh, something I've done here that could be done differently. And probably was done differently on the drawing. If I hadn't, have, hadn't cut the outside of that, there would be a very thin line connecting it across here to what comes beyond and I can still put it there uh, it just won't be the same as, uh, as it might have been and uh, now the outside of that circle oh that tool is just a little too wide so I'll do a couple strikes of this very shallow gouge margin and it's relative down here the inside of that circle 
I incised that as well, but that's too flat, that's too curved. <laughs> the first gouge I used the big three quarter inch one looks all right. A uh, big one inch one. This one's the center of the box, so it goes all the way around. Hold fast to letting go today. What did I use? I used this regular 3 8 inch chisel there. I'll show you next how I cut out the background because that's what happens next and then accent the leaves and the fleur-de-lis and last I'll do those circles. To take out the background in the in the cedar is really easy. I use the shallower tools for this. The, they're, well, in the Swiss made, they're number fives. Um, and the first thing I'll do, I'm just using hand pressure, holding the tool down low and using my right hand to propel the tool, my left hand to sort of act as a stop here. I've switched hands, so now my right hand holds it, pinching it between my fingers and thumb and the left hand is pushing it. Sometimes with oak I'll do this step with a mallet in the initial work. So I'm taking the background right near where I've made these cuts. I'm not yet concerned with getting the background uh, even or smooth or So right near where I made the cut, then I remove the chips, same there, and the cedar is so soft it just cuts like nothing. I don't usually carve softer woods, most, probably 90% of my carvings are oak. So here it's just a case of you see an uncut space and you work on chopping it out. This tool is only half an inch wide and it's um, the one I use the most for this work because I usually don't have a very big area to take out. It's usually tight, tight spots like it is today. And sometimes I'm just using part of the width of the tool, not using the whole width of it.
very tight quarters right in there. And likewise, right coming that way. Those I might still make that connecting piece, so I'm going to lay off of there for a minute. Nothing much different to this. It's just a matter of methodically going around and cutting up that background. What I'm getting there, that's not the finished result. This is just the initial removal of stock. top of that. So there goes the top of that one. And that's one of the hazards of these softer woods. The oak might have taken that hit and not, bro not broken. This is the very narrow connecting piece that usually runs through this uh, reduced section here of the vertical bit and connects up to these scrolls. It'd be here and there and here. And um, you define it with a chisel, but you, the resulting piece is very narrow and the cedar is a little too fragile. It seems like it wants to break off. Um, so that might go the way of all things. I might cut that out. But I'll show you um, how I clean up this background now. The point of making those first cuts is to isolate the bit that's going to remain solid so that now when I come back here to take a longer cut uh, to really sort of even out that background, I'm not going to knock this piece out or I lessen the chance of knocking it out. It can still go wrong. Uh, what I find in, in oak, you can cut every direction you want in a good piece of quartered oak anyway. And uh, in this cedar, it doesn't like to cut across the board, uh, across the grain, across the fibers. It cuts a little rough that way. So I end up taking a lot of these cuts running along it. And there goes the light, huh? So what happens when you work in a shop with natural light is sometimes it changes while you're working, and uh, there isn't a lot you can do about it. Sometimes I have too much light right now. I have some panels in some of the windows to cut out the sunshine. mostly for the camera, but sometimes also for me, because uh, sunlight right on the bench sometimes makes it hard to see stuff in the shadows. The result I'm after isn't dead flat. It's uh, often faceted. I'll probably texture this with a punch. 
almost always do on these strap work designs. Back bit. There I'm just going in with the corner of the tool to get that out. And the smaller the space, the less you can really achieve in there. You don't want to go down to uh, teeny tiny little tools. Um, the goal is to get this done in a timely fashion and um, and get on with it. You know. So this, I, I would rarely, rarely go smaller than this half-inch wide tool. In there, I never got that bit out. So I'm just going to wiggle the tool, or pivot the tool around and take it out just with that corner like that and you saw that it split right out because it had been separated it was just a matter of cutting it out I hit that leaf a little bit. And you want to uh, use a brush, not your fingers, because you can end up with a splinter if you use your fingers. I'm using my heel of my hand like a little mallet like a percussion tool here again is that corner just picking that out As soon as I tell you to use a brush or something, I've swiped it with my hands twice. That's usually the way it goes for me with making these videos. I tell you what not to do and then I go and do it. Why don't I show you a little bit about that. The first thing is right where it um, sort of sneaks out from under here. I'm just going to make a little bevel right there. And then, and I did that just by pivoting the tool around that, um, around that solid. Now I'm going to cut here with the bevel up and just round that right there like that then inside that leaf are veins in oak I would strike this with a um, mallet and in the cedar I just push it and it's a narrow little tool three quarters of an inch wide or so no half an inch wide <clears throat> and I've just made three little V's there and then behind the first and the third I'll take a little chip out that. And here, same sort of thing. I'll take a little chip behind that leaf 
behind that one with the tool I made that shape with. It's this, uh, uh, I don't know how wide it is, five-eighths of an inch or something. And this also gets, can just fit one of these things in it right now. There's variations of these if you get the, the carving drawing set that has the strap work. There's different variations. Sometimes it's flirt leaves, it's just three leaves a vertical and the and the two rounded ones and then there'd be more of that sort of thing in there now a couple of things if you've looked at any of my other carving videos or seen the book there's a textured punch that does the background again Jenny Alexander used to say, it hides a multitude of sins. I'll do this leaf again. You can see that one more time. So this is just a pivot move where I take the gouge and just turn really in my feet and in my hips and swing right around like that. And then this cut comes from here and just rounds off the top of that like that. Uh, while we're doing the decorations in here as well and um, I've only got room for two of them I'd usually have three Even in oak, you've got to be careful with these because you can split that whole business off. And in something like this cedar, even more so. So if you're searching for a wood to carve, you might want to try some of these cuts in some practice boards first before you... Uh, Commit to your piece of furniture. There's another punch I use that's really just a big nail set, and I like to use it here, like that, and ultimately I'll use it here and here. And these uh, ideas are based on stuff I've seen on old ones, but there's always a lot of variety in them. Uh, 
the main principle with this pattern is just this band of the thing that gives it its name, strap work, this band that sort of runs throughout the whole design, connecting all the bits. So uh, that's all the steps except for these rosettes in here and I'll show you what to do with one of those. There's lots of different ways to fill in that inside. Um, so I can only show you one at a time, so I'll show you this one. I take that narrow gouge that did this circle, and I want to do something really difficult with it. I want to make a, a small circle that's going to remain. And that's really hard. So this could blow up in my face. Now I want to cut out right around it just by sort of easing that tool around and around cutting that little dish right around that what I call a button, that little solid one false move and that goes flying. So now I'll come further back and hollow this. I'm not saying anything because this is really hairy. If you lose that button now, there's no real recovery. You just have a flawed design which can still go in your piece of furniture. A lot of people won't even notice it, but you will. So that's generally hollowed around there. Now I want to gouge, I'm hoping this one, yes, this three quarter inch wide gouge. I'm just going to make a pinwheel around here. And so I'll take the gouge, I'll do it this way, and I'll line up the gouge so that this part of it is on that vertical line like that and then it bends away and it reaches out to the margin So, once I've made those cuts, then I come back here and just take that chip out like that. And this is fairly deep, these cuts. And as you come around now, I have to be careful because what I'm cutting towards is already fragile. So 
I can take a little of it like that and come back and take a little more. And those ones across the board are a little bit rough. Now I'll take that little curve gouge like this and make a little hook on the ends of these pieces. Like that. And then with this very narrow gouge, just go in there and try to take out some of that wood. right between this cut and the, the edge of the circle and the front of that next leaf. Hard for you to see that. And at that point I want to now lightly bevel that um, that piece I call the button. Just give it a little more three-dimensional look to it. And at this point you can do a number of different things. You can quit. Uh, I tend to put a vein in those leaves. Like that. And that becomes particularly effective once you put a finish on this. put an oil finish or something on it and, and that shows up even more so. You can bevel these leading edges of this stuff. Uh, let's see. I just just take the tiniest bit off. Uh, you have to watch your grain direction right there. So this one has to come that way. This one wants to come this way. So the payoff for this is not that great. But it just throws a little more shadow here and there. like that. And you can, if you're so inclined, hit out here with your punch like that. What have I forgotten? This comes out and you have to do that with the corner of a very small tool to kind of pivot back and forth take that out and that piece I spoke of earlier that's a loose so I don't think that's going to survive. And then, uh, and even if I get one of them to survive, will I get eight of them to survive is the question. This is two, four, six, eight on the whole box front. So I'll show you what I was doing, but those might go away. It's just a chisel strike. Eh. Right there. And 
and then the challenge is that one there. See, and that's already forcing the one I want to keep is shifting and moving, so I, th I think it won't last. And then to get that little sliver out is the devil. Right there. So, if you're going to try that one, ideally, it stays solid into here, so that cut would have been interrupted right there. And then it gets a little bevel as if to slide under here to continue on. So I'll bevel it coming to there too. And then the punch will help um, define it too. Like that. So that bevel is just like that. Just like that. Otherwise, just cut that whole thing out and make it just a background into that little blind alley there. I'll show you a different variation on that rosette. I'll do this half one at the end of the box uh, with a much much simpler pattern that uh, first of all it stays flat. You don't do that hollowing. There's no central bit. It's just a uh, same gouge and a sort of sunburst of cuts like that. Might go to a smaller one for the top. Yeah. So chop those and then just cut out behind them with the same tool that made them. So it only takes a second. And um, and fills in that space. So if this one is too much for you to tackle right now, that's a really simple way to do them. Uh, when you do it as a full circle, you just have to be careful not to knock out the top and bottom of it. Then it just repeats. If this is the center line, the whole pattern just repeats to my left. Um, and that's just one of many variations on this um, strap work. You can see, I meant to tell you, you can see I lost one of those little bands like I was talking about. And that is just due to uh, the fragility of this uh, cedar versus the oak be more likely to stay put in the oak. And um, so over time I'll cut some more of these strap work designs and post more of these videos.